guys. So I've been asked about the pine cone paper. <clears throat> so I've only really made one batch of it. So we're gonna experiment with a couple new things from the last batch. In the last batch, I just took the dry pine cones that I collected from outside. These are from the woods next door to my house. I whacked them with a hammer and stuck them in a blender, which I'm gonna show you that part too. But the trick with any paper making is to get the pulp ground down as fine as you can if you want a really smooth paper. While I like the rough texture of the first batch of paper, I'd like to see if I could get it smoother. So I've got these giant metal snips. I have no idea if they'll cut pine cones or not, but we're gonna find out. The answer is yes. So we're gonna cut our pine cones they're in a bag, in a, a grocery bag, actually two bags, I've layered them. And I'm not gonna cut them super small, I just wanna break them up a little bit. And then we're gonna still whack them with a hammer. Ugh, there we go. So we're gonna do that. The smaller I can get them, even if I can only chop them in half before I whack them, the um, easier the chopper thing will have in getting them ground down to a fine pulp. So you wanna really like kinda work at it. Oops. Also the drier your pine cones are and the less fresh, probably the easier they're gonna break. Oop, there we go. So I'm gonna cut all my pine cones at least in half and I'll be right back. They're all broken at least in half. I did use my nippers and also I got a pair of pliers out and that worked. Now I'm going to lay them on the concrete ground. I'm gonna whack at the bag full of pine cones a few times with this four pound mallet. If you're bringing these back in the house to continue working on when you're done smashing them, like I am, get in fresh bag and put um, the other two bags of the pine cone bits in them in another bag because smashing them, they're sharp and pokey. It puts a bunch of holes in the bag and you'll just trail pine cone bits and there's some moss in there um, in between the pine cone things. Anyway, you'll, tr you'll trail it through the house, so don't do that get a fresh bag. I'll be, I'll be back. Okay. Once you have your thing from nature, um, pounded up, cut up smaller, you're going to want to chop it. So I have this inexpensive, um, ninja food chopper thing. Um, get, don't spend a lot of money on this cause you're probably going to burn it out pretty quickly if you make a lot of paper. Um, it's good for chopping up paper pulp and something like this. Uh, but I would get it at like the thrift store or a grocery outlet type store. Don't spend too much money on it. You're also going to want an empty jar. And I'm going to, oops, and I already cut myself, you know, because that's what I do. Anyway, I'm going to put all of my pine cone bits into here, hopefully in here, with hopefully without making too big of a mess. So let's see how good idea at that. So sometimes it doesn't like it when I try to chop things without putting water in there but I would like to have the pine cones just be dry for right now because I want to just have some jars of just pulp, pulpy things, um, dried paint bits, dry, of, the, of course the dried pine cones and stuff like that because I'm going to be putting all of them in paper and that reminds me I've got paint, dried paint bits around here somewhere. We're going to grind those up today too. All right. Hang on, let's try this and see what happens.
everybody. So <clears throat> nobody ever said paper making was not messy because it's very messy. So um, I will only be doing a limited amount of this inside. I will be doing more of it outside when it warms up outside. So that being said, you want to um, smash the crap out of your pine cones and or chop them up as small as you can before you start putting them in the blender because um, it is hard for the blender to chop them otherwise. It's not impossible, but it's hard. And you also don't want to put too many in the blender when you do do that. Um, you'll notice my blender's full of dirty water. Um, and I have this cookie sheet here. And no, that's not all pine cones. So what I do is I don't waste the paper towels I've used to sort of keep my work area clean. That's just pulp for the paper that I'm going to make. And they're stained. The paper towel gets stained with the color from the pine cones and or the dirt that's in the pine cones. Um, so I just grind up my pine cones as fine as I can. I usually am going to be, I think, leaving them a little bit chunky. Um, if you want to, you can grind them super fine and get something that's kind of sandy. Um, but most of the time when I'm doing it, there's going to be bigger chunks in there. I don't know if you guys can even see the difference between that on camera. So here's one that's finer and this one's got the chunky bits in it. Um, this is sort of a, a paper pulp. This is going to be a paper pulp sheet and I'm going to, it's in a cookie sheet. I'm going to let it dry. If I'm going to make paper with it right away, then I can just go ahead and do that. But I'm not going to be making paper with it right away. So I don't want to fix, stick this in the jar while it's wet. I want to let it dry and then break it up and stick it in the jar. If I do when it's wet, it's just going to get moldy. Um, and then when I go to make paper with it, I can take a few of the small bits out of the jar and I can put those in the blender and then regrind them again with whatever I'm going to add to it. Um, so what I'm going to do here... I'm not sure you're getting it on camera. Well, I guess you're getting some of it. I'm just mixing the pine cone bits with the paper towel so it's sort of semi-evenly semi distributed. It's kind of fun, I gotta be honest. It's you know kind of fun to get messy. And I am puppy sitting and she's out in the hallway and I don't think she's so sure what to think about the blender. <laughs> Then I'm going to spread it out thinly on the cookie sheet. Um, I do have a funnel and a strainer, mini strainer. Um, I think I got the little strainer at the dollar store. It's either from Dollar Tree or it's from Daiso, but I think it's from Dollar Tree. They're for your sink, so they're in the kitchen aisle. And I'm going to use it to drain off a little bit more of the water that's in here. There's just a little bit more without, a trick is doing it without dumping all the pulp that you just created all over the place. I'm making a huge mess. And then I can also kind of do this and take handfuls of it and dry it off that way. I don't have anywhere to put that now. <laughs> That's actually a good idea. So by the way, then you just have a ball of pulp. Um, <laughs> and my hands are filthy. Let's see, I'm going to just put it over here on a rag. You don't want to do that to start with because there, you're going to end up with way too much water in here in it. And you can't really grind up the pine cones without water. Um, you're going to burn out your blender. It's not going to be happy about that. It, it's just too thick for it to blend. So you have to do it with water. I suppose if you had a spice grinder or a coffee bean grinder, you maybe could do it. Um, I don't have one of those handy that's for the craft room, so... Did you see my clip go flying? I don't know. The reason I have the strainer in there is because I don't want to lose any more of these bits than I have to because it took too long to make them. 
So when you do it this way, you can save any small bits. I can get my cookie sheet pretty dry, which is great. The drier you get the cookie sheet when you put the pulp dough, so to speak, back in it, the less time it'll take for it to dry out and the less chance you have of it getting moldy. So now I can put my pulp dough balls back in here and spread them out. Um, over the spring, I'll be gathering some moss from our local area. We're surrounded by woods and wet, protected wetlands. Um, so I'll be playing with some of that along with like dried foliage and things, not only from my yard, but stuff I, I know I already have in my stash. Let's see. All right. So let me clean my hands off and I'll show you our pine cone pulp. It's not paper yet, it's just pulp. It's ready, ready for adding to other things to make paper. So I'll be back. So here is our pine cone and paper towel pulp that will someday be paper. When it dries out, I'm gonna put it in this empty gelato jar here. So that's one thing that I'll be adding to my mixture in the little ninja blender to make paper. There is another one, and um, you know, the whole idea behind this is not only to make some paper that's interesting, and these are the two sheets that I have made yesterday. Um, it's also to reuse and repurpose and keep out of the landfill um, things that we can. And so um, yesterday I realized when I was um, getting ready for today um, that the little metal strainer in my um, bucket where I drain all my dirty water, I'll show you in a minute, um, that I could maybe pick out some of the dried paint chips and paper pulp and things out of the strainer, which I did. And they're gonna, and I also have dried paint blobs, you know, from the top of your paint tubes. So those are, that's all gonna go in another jar. And um, I'll probably have one jar um, or stack that's just white paper and I'll be able to pick from my different jars when I wanna make paper and just pick different things to put in the paper. Of course, you can also, you put glitter and things like that in, but the point is to make paper out of things that would normally go in the landfill. Let me go show you what I mean by my metal strainer. Hang on. Bathroom, which it doesn't look like this when we have guests. <laughs> but in between time though, so if you are a guest here or going to be, this is what it looks like when you're not looking. <laughs> um, this is my pile of stuff that's drying that I've rinsed off or washed. And um, this is the sink I usually use. I do, I'm trying really hard not only to keep things out of the landfill, but to keep the sink clean and keep it from getting stained. Um, this house wasn't built with a utility sink, so I have to make it work, um, which I think I do. I have my jar of Murphy's Oil Soap and Water over there for the paint brushes. I've got a rag I can wipe my hands on and not use the nice guest rag um, and get that all marked up. This is what I actually wash in. So I have this in the sink. I wash the brushes or whatever in here and then periodically dump this bucket in here. So this is a five gallon bucket with a lid and I cut a hole in the lid and I put this dollar store metal strainer in the top. I usually line it with a coffee filter and then all the water goes in here. I let it sit for a little while and the water will separate from the heavies, the solids, and the sludge and solids will sink to the bottom and I can drain off the water that's at the top um, down the toilet or something like that. And the sludge just lives at the bottom and as soon as we it warms up outside, I'll be taking like a cardboard box and putting a black garbage bag around the outside of it and dumping the sludge into the cardboard box out and leaving it out in the sun somewhere to dry um, and disposing of it safely that way. Um, but what I was noticing is, if you notice on the strainer, it's got water in it right now, but this is like pine cone bits and it usually has pine cone bits or um, paint chips or something in it. So I will be taking those out and I'll be adding them to our jars of things to make paper with, our pulpy things. 
So that's going to be pretty cool. And I'll probably be taking the coffee filters and grinding them up, them up too. So paper making adventures. This is just part one. I'll be back in part two and you know, we'll do a, a more in-depth thing um, with regards to my disposal system and what I'm doing to be keep my things clean, but also be more environmentally conscious. Um, on a different video, I do want to get a second one of these buckets so that I can have one that's outside in the sun and the other one that's in here being used. So that's, I've got to go back to Walmart and get another one. That's where this is from, by the way, but you can get them at any hardware store. Just make sure you get a lid too. All right, that's it for right now. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Support the free content here on the YouTube channel by using my Linktree link. You can find my Etsy shop, my Amazon um, store, where to buy my book, my Patreon, my tip jar, all that stuff, and all the places to stalk me on social media, as my friend Shannon Green would say. Um, so use that, and don't forget the most important thing. Do something nice for yourself, because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.